No. Tell your partner why it's not a redox. Okay, so stick with me. What's the like super obvious thing that shows you it's probably not a redox? Okay, there's no single element. All right, that's everything with a single element is a redox reaction. Now, I will say not every redox reaction has a single element, but the other way is true. So no single element, probably not a redox. To double check, you would just to assign charges and no charges changed. It is then a gas forming reaction where an acid reacts with the sulfide anion to produce hydrogen sulfide gas and sodium chloride. So it would be H plus plus Cl minus plus Na2S. Usually this is solid. It didn't say it. So did most of you treat it as an aqueous or a solid or did anyone even do it? Let's treat it as a solid since no one did it. All right, goes to H2S gas plus Na plus plus Cl minus. Tell your partner what the only spectator ion is. So what was it? Cl. It's the only thing that was in both aqueous substances. That will be a spectator ion every time. Okay, we'll just do one more just as a warm up. Uh, which one do you want to do? Seven, eight, nine, or 10? Eight? Sounds good to me. Oh, hey, cute. I'm not in pen tool. Will you try number eight on your own? First off, tell your partner why it is a redox reaction. There's a single element. Yes, they're still there forever. Good. 
All right, let's try and wrap this up in the next 30 seconds, if you would. All right, let's let's work through it together. It is not balanced. Yeah, it's not. Okay, here we go. You ready? So I came up with the following numbers. I found that N was minus three because H is a plus one when bonded to a non-metal and there were three of them. You okay with that? H is always a plus one when it's with a non-metal, a negative one if it was with a metal. Then elemental anything is always zero. If it's just a pure element, it's a zero. Then I came over here, oxygen is a minus two. Since there's one of them, it was making N be a plus two. N doesn't wanna be a plus two, right? But how come it can be? Matting energy, nope, it's with oxygen. Oxygen can tell any element except for what, what to do? Fluorine. All right, then H is a plus one and O is a minus two. So we have N going from negative three to positive two. It became less negative, so it must have lost. And how many of them? Five electrons. And if it lost, we would say it was oxidized. Okay, then we come up here. O went from zero to negative two. All right, so it must have become more negative, which means it gained two electrons and it was reduced. You okay with that? Now, the numbers don't add up. But did anyone balance this out right here? What is it? Four, five, what? Everyone agree with that? Yep, that's 20. Four times five is 20. Five times two, two times is 20. It's probably right. How would you balance it? You would just go through the process. You'd see a two, three, but then that wouldn't work because then you'd still have to fix the H's. So that's why it ends up as a four. Oxidation reactions can be pretty tricky to balance. Redox reactions can be extremely hard to balance. We'll learn a whole process on that in another chapter. All right. I am done with redox as far as like drawing them out. Let's just quickly wrap up the rest of this that I thought we'd do Friday, but we didn't get there. Okay, redox reactions or single replacement reactions are also called displacement reactions. There's nothing different than what I already said. In displacement reactions, ions oxidize an element. It means the ions make the element lose. The ions then are reduced. Let me get an example out for you.
All right, so right here, this is copper two sulfate. So write this reaction out there, right? Copper two sulfate. If you don't remember that formula, see if anyone around you does. All right, to the copper two sulfate, which is CuSO4, I'm gonna put iron. So put a plus sign and then put iron. Solid. All right. So here's a piece of iron. It's just a paper clip. So it's steel technically, but we're going to say it's iron. I just scrubbed it with steel wool to take off the wax, like plastic coating they put on it. So I have that. I'm going to put some copper two sulfate in this graduated cylinder. All right, then can what? Well, I had it like this at the start. It's CuSO4. Okay, now, can you see that this is just nice and silvery looking? Okay, so I'm just gonna put it in here for a second. And can you see that it's darker already? Okay, it's already darker. I'll put it in a little bit longer as I walk back here and it gets darker. Yeah. Holy cow, crazy, huh? Bring it back here. It's like black now instead of just a little bit darker. Uh, kind of. Okay. You can kind of see it. Okay. It was not that way before, right? What is that stuff on it? That is weird. Fine. I touched it. Oh, oh no, okay, that's a good question. All right, so I'll leave that in there for a second while I wipe this off. Nothing real dangerous here, just don't want to get my new, that's not new, it's actually like 10 years old. Oh, that's, a, that's such a nice sink. 80% of the water comes out here instead of where you expect it to. All right. Like for real. Oh, as a reminder, it's my birthday month right now. I accept presents anytime during really my birthday quarter, which started October 1st. All right. So here it is again. If I did this right, I'm going to kind of mix it up. And can you see stuff falling down? I know it's hard to see in the back. Okay, let me be a little bit more vigorous. And then I'm gonna walk around one more time. Is it black? Okay, well, so tell your partner what you think is going on. Oh, 
All right. So tell your partner what you think happened and then we'll talk and we'll learn a word I don't like. All right. Sound like a pretty deep and thorough conversation. So I had CUSO4, right? And I added, I don't know why the plus sign was so close. I, I, I added FE, correct? So what had to be on the other side? All right, FESO4, and we'll just say it's iron two, just to save us some work. And then what were you looking at there? What did you see? Good, you saw copper. Individual copper atoms at first, they just look black. But then you kind of get enough of them. And you know, I knock off all the ones that were black. And now they don't look black anymore. They look coppery, right? It just keeps on getting more and more copperish. We'll, we'll leave that in all day. It was with the copper. We're going to learn right here about the activity series. So save that question. We'll talk about it. The short answer is that copper likes to be by itself and it can make iron not be by itself. We'll talk about it. I would say seduce. I would use the word reduce or oxidize. Personally, um, all right, here we go. We had a plus two and it became a zero, right? We had a zero and it became a plus two. So hold on, copper went from positive to more zero. So we'd say it was reduced, it gained. Whoever said that, you were right. I just went short this time. So copper was reduced, which means iron was what? Oxidized. So here you go. Copper can cause iron to be oxidized. But if I have iron sulfate and I add copper to it, will iron cause the copper to be oxidized? No, there's order here. Copper is a better oxidizer than iron, or it's harder to reduce. These words get really tricky coming up. I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. So we can see that right there. Um, another one. Uh, I'll show you a video of this one. This one's way expensive to do because silver nitrate is really expensive. I'm guessing because of the nitrate. <laughs> Just kidding. I've never watched this video. I assume it shows what I want it to based on its title. That's good teaching one-on-one -on -one is to just play some random YouTube videos, right? Okay, so this is a pretty famous demonstration. We have a Christmas tree made out of copper. You okay with that? It is a chemistry, you're right. He's gonna put that in in a beaker with silver nitrate. Easy enough. All right, what a beautiful chemistry. Plus the silver nitrate. This would be like a well over a hundred dollar demonstration he's doing right here. 
Now five times speed goes black at first. All right, tell your partner what's happening right now. It doesn't become silver, but the silver plates on it. Okay. So here we go. Copper, if you remember right, or copper two sulfate, I should say technically, was able to make copper or sorry, iron be oxidized, right? And we said iron couldn't do the reverse, but this video is showing us that who can oxidize who here? Silver. Okay, so at first, this is just silver ions depositing on the copper solution as they come out. All right, and it starts black, just like our copper demo did. And then it starts to get more and more silvery. It's funny. Oh, fuzzy. This is nitrate. All right, copper replaces the silver in the silver nitrate solution. Another way to put that is that copper Solid on this side is copper plus two. Now there's more to this reaction, but so far the copper solid becomes copper ions. Go ahead. No, because it's not really there it was with silver nitrate so what you do is you take silver solid you react it with nitrogen in the presence of oxygen and you can end up with agno3 and that'd be a solid but then you dissolve it in water to make it aqueous and then you have the silver ion which isn't just a chunk of silver it's literally an ag that's lost an electron just chilling. It was hanging out with NO3, but we know they break up. And now it's looking for a home. And it found that copper says, hey, you go into solution. I'm going to hang out by myself. Okay. In this whole thing right here, we know there's more. But if copper is going from this to that, tell your partner if it's oxidized or reduced. It is oxidized. Okay, now the solution was silver nitrate, right? So the solution really was Ag plus, but over here we have Ag solid. So this is a zero, it was a plus one. So what happened to here? Are we okay with that? Okay, so look. Silver can oxidize copper. Copper could oxidize iron. So here's my question. Can silver oxidize iron? Talk for 10 seconds. It's not a trick question. Okay, so who thinks, yes, silver should be able to oxidize iron? Good, that is, that is correct. Okay, let's go back to our video. I don't know what else he's got left, but it doesn't get much better than it already is. Uh, I doubt he shakes it. It's too pretty. Those are, that's pure silver crystals. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's my question. What is, what is this stuff? <laughs> what other observations can you make about this? 
besides a Christmas tree. The liquid changed color. Hmm. Yeah. Is that because copper is orange when it's just water? There you go. Yes. <laughs> I was like, you're so right, but so wrong. Okay. What's this stuff right here? Copper two sulfate, uh, copper two nitrate, copper two chloride, all of them in solution form blue liquids. So what's the liquid left at the end of this demonstration? copper to nitrate. So the blue liquid is evidence that reaction happened. This is so annoying. The KP boundary and C West chemistry wrap. I, we got it, don't we? <laughs> I'm going to get fired. <laughs>
and then they would store it just in a bottle and no one had any idea it was there. Now they couldn't pour it out and get their ring back, but they still had all the gold. Kind of cool. What's that? It, it literally was, but they, they had no idea to look there. No, that's just liquid gold. We would have to react it with something that would cause it to go into solution. The ring, I got to be really careful. The ring does not turn to gold. The ring goes into solution and you now have gold wrapped around where that used to be. So this right here, someone turn the lights on for me real fast. All right. So I did not turn the paper clip into copper. It just has a plating of copper on the outside. And if we come back tomorrow, there's probably not enough in here, but if I had enough copper and enough time, you would have a copper tube and a hollow center. The iron would be in here in solution and the solid copper would be right here. Okay, now here's the reason my ring is gold. It's because nothing can oxidize gold. It's extremely non-reactive. It's called a noble metal. And besides like the scratches, my ring looks exactly the same as it did when I got it. It's probably lost a little bit of mass, but it's still as shiny as the day I got it, okay? 21 awesome years ago. But here, if you bought your girlfriend a lithium ring, it blow her finger off the first time she had sweaty palms because everything, including water, can make lithium react, all right? So lithium is the easiest to oxidize. Gold is the hardest to oxidize. Or lithium is the best reducing agent. And gold is the best oxidizing agent, which is like the reverse. But we don't have to worry about that until chapter 19. Okay. So if I, let me see if I have. Here we go. Perfect. Short discussion. Will the following reactions happen as written? Sorry, there's no S right there. So look at the activity series as written. See if you think they will happen. I did. That does not surprise me at all. Any other issues? What? For hydrochloric acid, that means H. The H, the hydrogen. All right, I'm going to move on pretty quick. You ready? Okay, so it may help to write them out. You may not have to. You don't have to, but I'm going to. Nickel metal, that's Ni solid, right? Plus copper 2 sulfate, or sorry, 2 nitrate, CuNO3 2 goes 2. So coming back to here. In order for the reaction to happen, the lone element, which was nickel, must be higher than copper, right? Where's nickel? Right here. Is it above copper? Yes. So do we predict the reaction would happen? 
Yes, we do. Hydrochloric acid, sorry about that. This would be HCl um, and silver metal. But when we talk about the acid, we're really talking about hydrogen. That's why it was blue. Sorry about that. Okay, so silver is the lone element. Is it above hydrogen? No. no. So would a reaction happen? No. no. Chromium, um, chromium metal, so Cr, which is right here, and cobalt, which is right here. Will a reaction happen? Yes. Calcium is added? Absolutely. This is a very, very powerful reaction. Calcium, hydrogen, see how far apart they are? Pretty energetic reaction. What's that? Gold and lithium? Very, very good reaction. Now, where do we use lithium a lot? Batteries. Why? They're very reactive. They will get that electron moving without much effort, okay? But that's also the same reason why, like, you got to package them weird when they put them on planes or anything like that. They're extremely reactive. Say that one more time. It's become all ions. And so then you plug it back in to force the ion back towards the solid lithium. So that when you unplug it, it will do what it wants and send the electron to be an ion. It's genius, honestly. Um, okay, that's it. The rest of the lab book or unit, sorry, is math. Sound good? All right, let me, hopefully I have this open. Here we go. This may or may not be useful. So we've learned so far, thank you for loving this class. I love it too. We've learned a lot about stuff, about reactions and a bunch of different times or types of them. I made this flow chart up a few days ago when I was just chilling with my fifth hour, wondering when I would ever get to teach them again, which is today. All right, so reaction times or types. If you are just given a reaction, and I ask you what type, and it's nice to know the type so you know how to finish it, you can ask yourselves these questions. So the first question would be, does it have a CH reactant, like CH4 plus O2 or something like that? If the answer is yes, then it is a combustion reaction. Now be careful, a combustion reaction is also a redox reaction. It's both. All right, the second question, if, if the answer was no to having a CH, then you'd say, all right, is there a single element involved? And if the answer is yes, it's a redox reaction. And there's three types of those. A combination, combination is like A plus B goes to AB. Decomposition, that's where AB would go to A plus B, or single replacement or displacements, that's AB plus C goes to AC plus B. So those are your three types. Notice all of those had a single element. If it has a single element, you have a redox reaction. All right, I'm probably going faster than you are, but I got to finish it in three minutes. The next question, is water one of the products? If the answer is yes, then you have to ask yourself, is the anion a carbonate, sulfite, or sulfide present? 
if it's no, it's just a straight neutralization reaction where you end up with the salt and H2O. If you see these things, you'll recall they are what? Red flags. Gas producing neutralization reactions. Okay. If you've asked all those questions and it's still no, you have a precipitate form. <laughs> I forgot how it ended. It's a good ending. You'll see. All right. If 99.999% of ours will end here. This bottom one is extremely rare, but it says, does any element change charge from one side or the other? If that is a yes, then it's redox. There are some that don't have single elements that have a redox reaction, but they're extremely rare. Okay, now the no, if you got no to every question, then you did something wrong. There's no other option. Okay, let me see here. This is all connected. I will try and get on one slide if you want to take a picture of it. Sorry. What? Oh, you want me up there? I do look good in this shirt. You guys haven't made fun of me yet, but last year they called this my graphing paper shirt. Do I look regal? You screwed up. I should put no, drop the class. It's hopeless. Okay, tomorrow we do math. I'm excited. Aisley's excited. She loves the math. I can see it. <laughs>